All right, here is figure 2-80 from Make Electronics. This circuit is intended to show the most basic behavior of what a capacitor is. Um, before we get into analyzing this circuit, let's look at what a capacitor is at the most fundamental level. If you wanted to build a capacitor from scratch, what you would need to do is you would need to take two pieces of some kind of conducting material, could be aluminum foil, could be some kind of other metal foil, and you would sandwich them really close together. You could have air in between them, you could have some other material that's an insulator, um, but the point is you get a conducting material, two pieces of it, really, really close together. There's some little distance D in between, and D is somewhere from one millimeter all the way to maybe a micrometer, maybe less, it just depends on the capacitor. The point here is that the metal that's conducting won't allow current to pass from one plate to the other, but the electrical effects can be felt across the plates. So charges won't move, but the attraction from positive to negative will still be felt. Um, the symbol for a capacitor in a circuit, the two parallel lines separated by a gap, representing an actual break in the circuit is apt because if you were to measure the resistance of a capacitor measuring the resistance across these points using something like a some multimeter it would re register something like 0L that's because the resistance across it 0L stands for zero load or infinite ohms so an infinite amount of resistance is what's represented across that gap of a capacitor now the most basic thing you can do with a capacitor is connect it up to a battery or some other voltage source. So if you were to connect the metal plates using some kind of wire to some voltage supply V, and again, our positive side is the long line, our negative side is the short line, then what happens is the plate that's connected to the positive side will be polarized positively representing, I use red to represent the positive charge, and the plate that's connected to the negative side will be polarized negatively because that's the side that's touching negative. Now, side note on the actual microscopic behavior of charges in a wire, what's really happening is that electrons are migrating through the wire, they're being pushed away from the negative side of the battery, and what we get on the negative plates is an excess of electrons. What the positive side of the battery does is it pulls electrons that are already in the wire close to it, and then what happens is it pulls electrons away from the other plate, creating a deficiency of negative charge. The end result is that the plates collectively are still neutral, though they have an equal and opposite amount of positive and negative charge, or whatever negative charge was migrated away from the positive plate is then eventually deposited on the negative plate. This leads to a very important rule of capacitors. We say they, quote, store charge, but what they really do is capacitors separate charge. I'm going to write that slowly so you can read it. I'll say it again. Capacitors separate charge. There is an equal amount of charge in either plates. One is positive, one is negative. Now let's go back to the behavior of this circuit. So there's two switches represented in this circuit. Switch A and switch B. In the most trivial case of the circuit, let's say I press switch B and I press switch A. Then all I have is a simple circuit represented by the 9 volt battery or the 9 volt DC power supply, the 1K resistor, and one single path. So current will flow all the way from positive to negative. Using our conventional current method, we can say V over R is 9 volts divided by one kilo ohm or 1,000 ohms. 
and we get a really tiny amount of current. We get our 0 0.009 amperes, a simple DC circuit. The capacitor right here, there's no reason for, cir for current to flow towards that direction because it's actually, there's no, there's no path here, it's a gap. So this is effectively uh, a non-existent branch when both switches A and B are closed. Interesting things happen, however, if we take away switch B. So let's say we closed switch A. So switch A is closed. For a short period of time, what happens is the top plate of the capacitor is still at a low voltage. It's at the same voltage as the other end of it. So that gives a voltage difference of 9 volts across this resistor, meaning current will flow. Eventually, this whole branch of the circuit gets polarized up to 9 volts. When that top plate of the capacitor reaches 9 volts, then all movement of charge in the circuit stops. The other side of the capacitor is held at the low potential of 0 volts below 9. And so current will flow just for a little bit. If we were to plot this on some kind of graph, maybe we were connected to some kind of probe where it's recording this over time, we would see voltage. It would stop at 9 volts. Here's time. And at the moment we press the switch, say we start recording, your voltage on that top plate of the capacitor is going to increase asymptotically to 9 volts. This is, again, we are using some kind of voltage probe or meter to measure the voltage across these points, this side being the positive end of the probe and this side being the negative end of the probe. Similarly, the current that we would potentially measure Let's say we put a current meter at this point right here. Say we stuck a current meter, A. We would measure at the moment we press the switch some kind of maximum current. I'll label I as here, and I will be the pink graph. And it's going to start at some maximum value. And this behavior is going to mirror, but in the inverse direction, what the voltage says the maximum value of current is going to still be dictated by the equals the i equals 9 volts over 1 kilo ohms of resistance that 0 0.009 amps the bottom line is current is not going to keep flowing so capacitors don't have a static behavior they have a very time dependent behavior so it's not what capacitors do in steady state circuits that's important it's what they can do in really time-based circuits. So once this, once this side of the capacitor is polarized, it stays there. And then all bets are off when we close switch B. So if I press switch B, then what happens is this top end of the capacitor is then held to zero volts. And the capacitor, quote, discharges whatever excess charge built up is then rearranged and the capacitor both ends are at zero volts.